Hello and welcome to this week's Bordering Buddies podcast. So this week is really interesting for me because I am joined by Ashley Bishop of ABC Fitness um, because I don't do anything like that. So (laughs) I suppose I could be persuaded, (laughs) but but we'll see. (laughs) So um, Ashley uh, works with business owners to help them perform at their best because their business demands it and their family deserve it. I think that's absolutely key. So welcome, Ashley, and thank you for joining me on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here and to uh, yeah have a great conversation. Yeah, good, good. So, Ashley, I know because we have had one-to-ones in the past that um, the story that you have behind how you got here with your business is quite compelling. So tell us your story. Brilliant. Thank you. Yes, it's um, it's been a fascinating journey, which for me started back in 2005. And don't worry, I'm not going to go year by year, play <laughs> by play, you know, half an hour just going through that. So I um, I qualified as a personal friend in 2004. Uh, I was working as a gym instructor. And typically, uh, back then, gym instructors were on minimum wage. And they were kind of like the, just the, the general dog's body uh, mm. of, of, the, of the gym. I was like, do you know, one day... I was, I was 17, 18 at the time. I was like, one day I want to have a family. I'd love to have a family one day. Uh, and my mum and dad always told me that children cost a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> and of course, I didn't realise that until I had my own. Um, and I'm also a massive petrol head. And I know that cars probably cost the same amount, and sometimes if not more than children. So I need to do something where I can make the money I want to make to provide for a family and to have a few nice cars. Um, but also have the time to enjoy it because yeah. I used to see a lot of people, uh, a lot of the grown-ups in my family, you know, they worked really long hours and they didn't really see their family. So I need to do something. So in the early 2000s, personal training was this new shiny thing. It was just sort of filtering down from being exclusive for the rich and famous to now uh, more readily available. Um, so I qualified. It took a year to qualify. Um, it was a very uh, intensive, challenging course. Um, qualified came out and launched my own business on the 1st of January 2005. Uh, I started working out of a gym, which for me back then, uh, it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't a nice way to work with people because you were, you know, there weren't many personal trainers around then. So you saw some in the gym that had personal trainer written on the back and and everyone would try earwig for information. So I, I need somewhere to work from, you know, because to me that's, that would be true personal training. Um, so I eventually opened up my own facility in um, the 22nd of October 2005. It was a lovely converted barn and and started working from there. And with no business acumen, I had no idea about business. I just was passionate about helping people. So that lack of business acumen meant that within two years, I was fully booked because there were no other personal trainers in the area. You know, it was you were a personal trainer within a 30 mile radius of me. I was it. So two years fully booked. But because I didn't have that business action, fully booked was me delivering 40 to 50 one hour PT sessions a week. So by the time I was working with my clients and then doing all the book work, the paperwork, all that fun stuff that we all forget we have to do as business yeah. owners, I was working probably 60, 70 hour weeks, sometimes 80 hour weeks. Yes. But I was in my early 20s. I was living at home and it was mum and dad's laundry service, cooking service, clean. You know, they do everything for you service. And you don't pay you don't pay much money to live at home either. It's great. <laughs> that was fine. Um, and you know that allowed me. I bought. Um, I had made a really nice engagement ring for my then girlfriend, my now wife, Caitlin. Um, wedding of her dreams, honeymoon of her dreams. Uh, had a couple of nice cars as well. Uh, nice house deposit. Bought our, our first home together. Uh, then realised that I had to do this thing called adulting. Yeah, you know, I've now got to do the washing, the ironing, the cooking, the cleaning, the scrubbing, the toilet. I've got to do all that stuff as well. So now suddenly there's a bit more pressure. You know, I'm having to spin more plates. I've got this mad business that, that's really time consuming. But now I've got to help look after this home. A little bit more pressure, but we, we made it work. Uh, and then uh, we were blessed with our first son, Thomas, uh, who is 10 uh, this month, which is really scary. Um, and for me, that's when it all went wrong, uh, because suddenly... You know, you get given this 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 living thing that doesn't come with an instruction manual, you know, and all they do is like, cry and poo and eat and goodness knows. So suddenly I've got more plates to spin. And that's when it was like, I, I can't spin all these plates at once. I just can't do it all. Um, so what did I do? I did what most people do. 
I stopped looking after me, you know, because I can't give up on the business. I can't not help look after this living thing that we've got to figure out how to look after. So what's left? The time I spent looking after me. Mm, yeah. So by, right. by the time Thomas was one, uh, it was around his first birthday, I piled on around about three and a half stone. And literally, I get to the top of the stairs and I was breathless. Uh, and at that point, I was actually suffering from depression. Yeah, it, it wasn't a particularly fun, uh, no. fun time. Um, and it all came to a head, again, around Thomas's first birthday. Um, Kate and my wife sat me down for one of those conversations of, Ashley, I've gone back to work three days a week now. I've got less bedtime. Ashley, I pretty much run the house on my own. Putting the hoover around a couple of times a month doesn't count. Ashley, I feel like a married single parent. Mm. I'm not playing this game. Sort yourself out. You know, so that was the wake up call for me that I've got to do something. Um, and of course, you know, I've got my own personal training facility. You know, I've got all the gear. Yeah. Uh, I've actually got a small team behind me. One of those is is Shane. He's a world class nutritionist. Um, and we can call him world class because he he trained under and graduated from the Olympic Committee. So he knows his bananas much better than me. <laughs> I've got everything on a silver platter. Right. I need to get this done. So of course, off I go. You know, right, we change my diet, start exercising, drink more water, go to bed earlier, get up earlier, meditate, journey, you know, all this stuff. And I did brilliantly for two weeks. And then, of course, something went wrong. I fell off the wagon. I lost motivation and willpower and I gave up. And any results I'd achieved, I lost. A few weeks went by, had that kind of knee jerk reaction. I don't want to become a part time parent. Off we go again. Uh, in exactly the same thing. Brilliant for two weeks, all went wrong. So I came out of that and, and had that sort of light bulb moment of we have world-class information. And yes, all right, uh, I completely see the irony here of I'm an expert at what I do, but I haven't been looking after me. I get that. But we've got world-class information. Why can't I do the work? Yeah. If I don't have an information problem. I have an implementation problem. Yes. If I yeah. can figure out how to implement this stuff. I'm going to be on to a winner. So I went searching uh, and I came across the answer for me in something called neuroscience. There was someone in the health fitness world talking about neuroscience, behavioral change, you know, how we all know what we should be doing, yet we don't do it consistently. I uh, started diving into the courses that he created and sort of it started to become more and more of my geeky pleasure. And, and I came out very quickly and said, right, yes, we need this stuff. We need the nutrition, the exercise, the sleep, the time management stuff that we already do. But I now need to team it up with this neuroscience approach, this practical neuroscience approach to behavioral change and habit creation. And that's what it is. And, and I created a new program. I, I was client one, you know, yeah. I needed it. <laughs> um, went through it and I won't say it was easy. You know, there was no magic wand. Yeah. You know, it still took time, effort and energy. It still went wrong on occasions, but I had everything in place to then keep me going. Mm -hmm. um, so physician heal myself. <laughs> that's it. So, you know, I, I did the work, I got the results, um, lost the weight, got my fitness back, overcame depression, so much so we had another one, another child, uh, Jack, who's now six and a half. Um, and I, I realized two things. First of all, I realized at that point that my the people I can help the most are people that have had a similar journey. Because yeah. I've experienced it, I've been there, I've I've done that, I bought the t-shirt. Yeah. Um, Hence why I now spend my days talking to and working with small business owners, because I understand the, the challenges of trying to juggle or spin all those plates and look after yourself. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I realized that I needed help, um, uh, business coaches help to actually, how do I put all this together? How do I package it so I can make the money I want to make without working 70, 80 hours or 60, 70, 80 hours a week? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we fast forward to today and here we are. <laughs> yeah it is compelling uh, and I think many business owners will recognize some of that journey that you, you do stop looking after yourself yeah. and, and it seems ironic really uh, many business owners who like us who you know we want to help as many people as possible uh, we forget about ourselves yeah I think it's what I've noticed what I've what I've observed with the uh, the hundreds of clients I've worked with, the thousands of conversations I've had is what we do when we launch our business, you know, we, we dive into it and it becomes, mm. we've yeah. got to make it successful. So, you know, it, we, we have yeah. that tunnel vision, you know, and if we've got a family, we, we don't want to sacrifice any more family time because 
we do sacrifice our family a little bit when we start a business. Yes. Of course, what, what's left is, is us and the time we looked after ourselves. So it's normally in those first sort of two to four years of mm. getting your business to that point where your head comes above water. That's that's when we kind of sacri- really sacrifice ourselves. And then, of course, we, our head comes above water and we go, holy moly. You know, mm. you, my get up and go was gone, that afternoon energy crash. Um, a, a client described it brilliantly recently. They said, actually, everything's all right. But every day is hard work. Every day feels like I'm trying to sprint through treacle. You know, it's it's hard work and I'm not getting anywhere fast. Mm. Um, and, and that's because as a small business owner, you are your business's most valuable asset. Mm. You know, you're the driving force of your business. Mm. Uh, and of course, if you're tired, um, you don't have great health, mm. um, your head's all over the place, you can't drive your business forwards. You kind of... Okay. You're running on, the, you know, you're sprinting, you're like being on a treadmill. You're sort of working really hard, getting getting nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And you're emotional as well. Yeah. I find that, you know, it, you're short-tempered, you're um, irrational sometimes because you're so, I was going to say overwhelmed then, but I don't think you even have to go to overwhelm. I think just some business pressure. And we we just forget, don't we, when we start a business like you described, earlier um it, you know we, we start the business because we want to help people we're good at something and then we realize that actually running the business is a job in itself uh, and of course there's, there's very little training out there well this is it it, it <laughs> wasn't until i started employing coaches to kind of teach me these things i've I just been winging it uh, and of course, of course we all do, I, yeah. I think we all do you kind of have that all Business is all about delivering your thing to your yes. people. Yeah. But then you get, well, I've got to do the books as well. And I've got to do the advertising. And I've got to do the content creation. Yeah. And I've got to keep the place tidy. Yeah. And, and suddenly you've got this long list. It's like, it's not just delivering your thing. It's it's all of this stuff. It's, it's yes. all the same. Yeah. And you've got to fit that into however many hours a week. Yeah. And that's exactly one of the things that we do in Mastermind is, is we bring the group together because they help each other uh, to reduce all that, you know, overwhelm, if you like, you know, that because they ask each other, well, how do you do this and how do you do that? And so that they're, they're sharing all their experience and knowledge um, and it just helps them to think about their business and the things they do differently. So, yeah, it, it's really useful that having people around you to help you. And we, you know, do all the usual, you know, look at your cash flow and, you know, have you got this in place, that in place, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, really interesting. So tell us how you, what's the typical journey with a client then? What, you know, how do you kind of yeah, thank you. get them on board? So um, for me, we really, it's all conversational base. You know, over the years I've tried various different marketing strategies, spent thousands of pounds on various different, you know, Facebook mm-hmm. ads and Google ads. And what I found for someone like me where I'm selling a service and, and some of it's very, it's a very personal service. Yes. It starts you having a conversation like this. It just starts you having a conversation. Mm-hmm. So for me, you know, my, my people are, are business owners. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always gone actually, you know, well, where do business owners hang out? Cause I need to go and hang out with them. Um, so yeah. I do, Quite a lot of networking and, and it's just having a conversation you know listening to people a lot of people now we we talk for the sake of talking rather than the listening and really taking it on board or you know instead of really listening you're, you're listening to kind of give a you know to answer rather than actually listening to what's being said so i just listen to people you know and and it's amazing how just by listening to people you find out some amazing things mm-hmm. so i just you know for me it's all conversational based um, and at some point, some will go, Ashley, can you tell me more about what you do? Or, Ashley, I've been finding this challenge. Can we talk about how you could help me? Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, and at that point, we then go into uh, what I call um, a more structured conversation. Rather than just having it's a more structured conversation, I call it the, the exhausted to unstoppable strategy session, uh, where we're more focused. So that's like an experience of actually working with me. Mm. Uh, where we go through the first step of my process, which is all focused on uh, inspirational goal setting. Um, mm-hmm. that for me is great because it helps someone shift their mentality from yeah. 
exercise will be something I'll do when I have the time. Mm, yes. And let's face it, we never have the time because there's always something going on. Mm, or yeah. as I sometimes say to, to, to someone, if you've got time, you've got a bigger problem right now because your business is going in the wrong direction. It's interesting, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, because we're all a small business owners, but you know, it is yes. it's full on. It, you know, it always is and it and it always will be. If you're quiet, you're going in the wrong direction. Um but this is where you have to shift that mentality, that mindset from, yeah, looking after myself, I'll do when I've got the time. Mm-hmm. So actually, I understand why looking after myself is vital. I understand the impact it's going to have on my life, on my business, on my clients, mm-hmm. on my family. Yeah. So it's a vital thing. And I need to know how to do it in the most time efficient manner. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier th- about, you know, where, in the early days when you were working, 60 70 hours and and that kind of thing so you filled your working you know your 40 hours a week That's with it. 40 one hour sessions of, of delivery um and really we forget don't we that actually you need a couple of days a week to actually work on your business and yeah. do the the other job running it um That's so it. actually that that old fashioned mindset, you know, because you used to work forty hours when you were employed, yeah, you know, so you automatically take that into your business and and kind of imagine that you're going to work for forty hours delivering. But we have to realise as business owners that there have it we, we, pretty much you can only deliver two or three days a week because think- the others working working on the other part of the job. That's it. That's it. It's um, it was always said to me that in reality, only 50 percent of your time will actually be delivering your thing to your people. Mm. And yeah. I'm sure you know, it, it will be there or thereabouts. Some people, it might be 60 yeah. percent, 40. It might mm-hmm. be, you know, the other, you know, but it's got yeah. to be there or thereabouts because, yes, you've got all these other things to do. Um, yeah. All right. You may get to a point where you can outsource some of that. But there are also still a lot of small business owners who are. No, I've got to I've got to do this, that mm. and the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a, a chap came to a mastermind uh, kind of discovery session uh, a couple of months ago, and he's an accountant, just set up a practice. And we were talking about outsourcing uh, because I, as a you know small business owner, just like you, we, I try to outsource some of my stuff, you know, um, because I can't do it all. Yes. And um, And I'm not good at it. I think that's the important thing as well, isn't it? You can't be, as a small business owner, you can't be an expert at everything. No, no. You know, I, I'm rubbish at bookkeeping, so yeah. you know, all my accounts and that, well, I, I have someone do that because they're the expert at that, mm. um, and it would take me a long time. Same with um, technology. You know, I, I love being a man. I love technology. I never read the instruction manual. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, my, so the website, the app that I've had, to, you know, all this stuff, could mm. I do it myself? Well, probably I could read a book and teach myself how to do it, but how long is it going to take? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the chat that, that came to visit us and had a bit of a light bulb moment because we were talking about outsourcing and and I uh, said, well, you know, how much would you would you pay a bookkeeper? You know, and how much do you earn per hour? And That's... and he said, oh, yeah, even though I can do it, I probably shouldn't. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> um so we even though he's an accountant he helps out now outsourcing his bookkeeping uh, because he can earn more that's it. being the accountant i think that's again it's as we talk about framing it, as i was sort of talking about framing it from my health being nice things do we've got the time versus it's vital it's it's having that yeah. realization framing it of yeah. i'm paying this person x amount yeah but i can earn y amount you know and if where's the mm. where's the difference yeah, you 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 talked about it as you you are the asset in the business, and and if you imagine that, um, you know, I always kind of think, well, you know, if you had a big expensive machine that did your production, you wouldn't not maintain it, or you know, because it's a big expensive machine, it's one of your assets. That's it. Um, and yet, quite often we just ignore that as a business owner, don't we? Yeah. we're on that treadmill that hamster wheel of this is it and i think it's going. It, it's been drummed into us as well over over the years isn't it without going too far down that rabbit hole but you know that whole oh just keep your head down uh, and keep pushing forwards 
Or is it a bit tricky right now? Just keep your head down and keep pushing yeah. forward. And, yeah. and of course you do and you keep pushing it. But it, then also it gets harder because you're not looking after yourself and your head's all over the place and you don't have the, yeah. the physical, the mental or the emotional energy. And then you end up working longer hours. And, and it's very easy to run down that, that rabbit hole quite some way. Yeah. 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 So you, you've told me about, um, you know, having a conversation with someone. It just starts with a conversation. So let's cut to the chase now. How painful is it in terms of time and effort? And... Thank you, yeah. <laughs> well, after that conversation, there's there's two ways to work with me. Um, I've got um, what's called the inner circle and the elite circle. And this really depends upon the person. So, again, when we're having this more structured conversation in the uh, the exhaustive unstoppable strategy session, this is where I'm, I'm understanding where they're at, where they want to get to. Obviously, we've made that mental shift of actually your – Looking after yourself is vital for all of these reasons, the impact it's going to have. Mm. It's then kind of, well, where are you at? What do you want to get from this? So the inner circle is for those people who probably have done nothing for a period of time, because, again, they've made those sacrifices to get mm. their business to this point. Um, so they're really starting at sort of like at ground zero, as it were. But, but also they're never going to have the time, you know, they know they need to do something. They want to learn how, but it's like the minimum effective dose. What's the minimum effort I've got to put in? Because I've got all this other stuff to focus on as well. Mm, yeah. And, that's, and, I, and I completely get that um, because that's me as well. So for me, the, the inner circle is a, a group-based offering. So for me, that's going to be it's a group of up to 40 small business owners. Mm. And we start off with what I call the fit five. So when they come and start working with me, they go through the, the fit five process. Uh, and the fit five is your morning routine, hydration, nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Because in reality, actually looking after yourself so you can look, feel, and perform your best is really, really straightforward. Mm. It, it completely overcomplicated by the health and fitness world, obviously, because we want to the health fitness world wants to make money and to make money we've got to make things sound difficult that you need our help in reality it's really really straightforward you do these simple straightforward things and you you start implementing the way where you focus on habit creation you'll get great results like that so how this works um it works through the app that i've had developed which is a, a really exciting new addition um yeah. so the app if, uh, all clients get access to the app they get their own account and the app, there's two parts to the app. First of all, it's a habit tracker. So again, you go in there every day, tick, I've done that, tick, I've done that. So we can see what you're doing. Um, and again, if something isn't working for you, it, it highlights we're not doing it, so it's not working. We need to tweak it and refine the process for you. The other part of the app is where you've got the program. So this is where you can go in. I've recorded the trainings. So you go in, right, I'll watch this training. So you can watch it at your pace mm. when it's right for you. I always suggest to clients they schedule in like, you know, um, 30 minutes a week just to go through something. All the workouts are in there as well. So everything they need is within the app. They can access that on their phone, on tablet, laptop, desktop. We then do a weekly group call. Again, I, I love you talk about the masterminds and having the, mm. you know, many people go through the same experience. This is what I love. So every week on a Friday at one o'clock, we have a, a call. Um, and that alternates between sort of like an education, here's a new thing to talk about. Uh, and then we do like a, a true coaching, you know, what's working well, what's not working well, how can we help? Sometimes we'd like a hot seat as well, because I completely, I'm on the exact same page. You have a group of people that are like-minded. The support they will give one another is phenomenal. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, so that's the, the group based offering there. So, yes, we are looking at creating new habits like a more a 15 minute morning routine. We are looking at daily exercise. Again, that's 15 minutes. So it's all about the minimum effective dose. Because if I said to someone who's busy, well, you've got a lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on. You've got all oh, you've got to exercise for an hour a day. You've got to get up at five o'clock in the morning and join the 5 a.m. club and do an hour to get yourself in the right headspace. And then you've got to do this and then you've got to do that. Yeah, you you know, that's my problem. You don't have the time. Uh, yeah, I'm off already. You don't, that's it. No, I can't do it. You're, right. You're going to do, you know, a 15-minute morning routine to get you physically, mentally, and emotionally primed for the day ahead. You know, you're going to do, you know, a 15-minute daily workout. Here's the nutritional stuff. Here's the the, the, the hydration and, and the sleep. So it's all about that minimum effective dose. Mm. Because when we when we frame it this way, yeah, I can do 15. I can do 15 minutes of exercise a day. 
Mm. I'll fit it there, I'll fit it in there. Actually, I've got 15 minutes between that meeting and that meeting. So they say, oh, you've got to go and exercise for an hour in the gym. Oh, well, I've got to drive to the gym, so it's 20 minutes to the gym, then I've got to get changed, then I have an hour there, and, and suddenly it's, well, actually, it's not an hour, it's it's nearly two hours. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, again, from that habitual, it, it's framing it in a way where it's mm-hmm. it's not overly time-consuming. Yeah. So that's the, the inner circle for me. Uh, the the elite circle again this is for business owners they may be slightly uh, further on their journey maybe they've got a couple of employees right the, the real difference however is they're already doing things so they might already be running they might already be going to the gym or cycling or swimming so they're, they're already doing things but they may not be doing the right things or combining the right things together and they want to challenge you know they want to push themselves they want to apply themselves but they need that direction to go, well, you need to do this and this mm. and this. So yeah. that's the circle. So, well, that works a little bit differently. They have access to the app. So they've got the, the tracking, the habit tracker on there as well. They've got any trainings on there that they need. But the elite circle is a mixture of one-on-one and then a group thing. So uh, it's more hand-holding to those people that want a more tailored experience. We do a fortnightly strategy session when we go through the next step of the process for them. Uh, and then we do a monthly group call again which is that same sort of thing a little bit of learning hot seat sharing experiences helping each other out oh, okay yeah interesting yeah 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 i, I can't do that 5 a.m thing That's no just... i try i tried it i i for me it's all about going first you know i, I can't say to someone or try this if i've not tried it myself so <laughs> i've tried all the different diets and all the different fatty yeah. things out there just so I can actually, you know, say with confidence, I've done this and this is what I found. And yeah, I tried to join the 5am club. I joined it for two weeks and no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not playing that game. It's um, having a morning routine. Yes, I really, really believe it. Um, nice. But having to get up hours before everyone else, I, it's not sustainable for, for a lot of people. No. You know, you've got a, if you're trying to run a small business or you've got a family to look after, it, it doesn't work. No, no. I Not think as a long term strategy. And that for me is yeah. habit creation, you know, I want to, for me, I want to impact people's lives. So, you know, like one client recently, I worked with this person 10 years ago. Um, we, we bumped into each other. Actually, well, I'm, I'm not doing everything exactly as we did, but I'm still doing things. I'm exercising every day. I've got, you know, a slightly different morning routine, but, you know, still drinking enough water. We're eating in a way that's working for me. And I've got the results. I'm keeping the results. When, and since when I spoke, I've launched my new business and it's going great. And I've done this. Mm. And if I'm honest, a lot of it all comes down to the work we did together. Brilliant. Yeah. So that that for me is what it's all about. You know, yeah. this, the quick fix of coming, you know, could I give someone an eight week program to help them drop two clothes sizes? Yeah, of course I could. But what's the likelihood of them continuing to do that after those eight weeks? Mm. Yeah, because it it will be an extreme thing that's that's unrealistic for you to to do day in day out. Yeah, I I I think there are a lot of people that might continue with that because eight weeks is probably enough to start to build a um a routine, mm. you know. Um, but I think for people, and this is me as well, I've got to have the accountability. 